Okay, guys. So tonight we have Sean of the Nerd Layer. He has Yo. an amazing YouTube channel, an extreme diversity of content. Everything from you know, uh, going into video game stores, getting pickups, doing doing overviews of consoles, going into uh, specific games and reviews, even talking about you know '90s nostalgia, like great sitcoms and cartoons. So uh, you know, I don't even know where to start, but. I'm just excited to get into this with you, Sean. Tell us about when you when you uh, first began your channel on YouTube. Um, well, it started as a different channel. It started as a Pokemon channel only. And uh, I don't know. It was fun, but I felt kind of limited in the content I could make. Um, and this channel formed because I have so many hobbies. <laughs> so it just made more sense to focus on multiple things rather than one specific thing absolutely and, and right now we're watching you with your uh, star wars one-up arcade i have the same one i love it with the especially with the yoke on there uh you know oh, yeah. it has, has that classic feel to it and it's it's a really it's a really bargain for what you get and the marquee lights up um are you a big star wars guy um Kinda. I like the original trilogy a lot. Um, new Star Tr or Star Wars, not so. I'm more of a Star Trek guy. Okay. Um, I, I wish they would come out with some sort of uh, arcade one-up Star Trek cabinet. That would be so cool. That'd be like my my ideal cabinet to get. But yeah, new Star Wars is uh, it's a love hate relationship. I, I'd say that uh, now that Kathleen Kennedy is is out of there, um, I think the <laughs> the movies will get a little bit better. I feel you. I'm kind of with you on that. And uh, original trilogy guy. And other than that, you know, I really like the Mandalorian. How do you feel? How do you, how do you sit on Mandalorian? I actually haven't seen the Mandalorian at all. I'm one of those weirdos who like, I, I haven't seen Stranger Things. I haven't seen a any of the popular like TV shows out right now. Gotcha. Um, but uh, I, I like a lot of older stuff. Uh, I go back and watch, like, you know, uh, shows from the 90s. And I just recently got done watching uh, V, the miniseries. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's like a sci-fi uh, miniseries from, like, 1983. It's really good. With aliens? Yes. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with it. Yeah, it's uh, classic, um, you know, what if aliens came to Earth and... Uh, you know, it turns out to be not so good for them. It's really interesting and corny. <laughs> but when we're talking Star Trek, we talking Shatner era, we talking uh, Next Generation. So for Star Trek, um, my favorite series uh, would have to be not in any particular order. I like TOS. I like uh, the Next Generation. Uh, I like Voy Voyager. Um, Deep Space Nine is is good. Uh, it's a little more dramatic for my taste i like the um the the corny episodes where you know some space anomaly happens and they're in this nightmare scenario and they have to f you know use science and, and knowledge to figure out a way out of this mess right i love the sets on uh, next generation like at that time it felt so ahead of its time in a way like just that modern looking futuristic you know Main, main cockpit. I don't even know what you call. What do you what do you call the main room that they're in? Where he's got the, the main bridge. The bridge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, everything looks so great on that set. It, it looks it looked excellent. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know Picard is I okay. So like when when you watch TOS, if you haven't watched Star Trek at all, you watch TOS, and you get so like attached to the three characters. You know uh, McCoy or Bones or whatever. Um, Kirk and Spock. And then going to the next generation, it's like, who's this old bald captain? And, you know, and it's, everyone knows Patrick Stewart, but it's like still you, you get so attached to the original characters. And um, it, it turns out that TNG is literally, aside from the first two seasons, is the best Star Trek has ever been. And now it's kind of a dumpster fire with new, new Star Trek and new Star Wars are so, so bad. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is too. Let me get your thoughts on this. Are they trying to? Are they trying to please too many people? And when you try to please everyone, you don't. You don't do anything good. It's like you gotta. You gotta do it. You gotta do it for the art. You gotta make art for art's sake. You don't want to. You know. I think they're trying to do fan service, 
but then they're trying yes. to they're they're pulling too much from trying to copy the original stuff, and then they're trying to do this and that. I, yeah, I, um, it, it's it's a a, a mixture of a, a few different things: the writing, um, the so new Star Trek is not episodic episodes, one and done episodes. You know, there's a story in one episode. Next episode you go to, it, it's a completely different day. Something new is happening. Um, with these new ones, they're season long story arcs. So it's like watching an eight hour, a 10 hour movie or however many episodes it is. Cause usually they're like an hour long. Um, and I, I find that harder to, to watch because it's, you, you have to dedicate more time to it rather than I could watch a random episode of Voyager or TNG and I wouldn't really have to know what happened, you know, multiple episodes before that to understand what's going on in the episode. Right. And um, yeah. You know, so judging by your collection here, you're definitely look to be like a physical media guy. Uh, yes. I think most of us collectors are right. Like you know, there's not a lot of variation on that. You know, you don't meet a lot of collectors like I'm digital only. You know, because <laughs> it goes against everything we were raised on, right? We were raised on cartridges. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, having that physical. Okay, so like my stance on this, and the question has been popping up again recently is like physical media dead, um, and is digital the way of the future? Well, of course it's the way of the future. The way I see it is if I have the game digitally, technically I don't really own that game. Let's say like servers go down or something or the, the let's say Steam for whatever uh, reason has just like collapsed and all of, all of those games like aren't yours anymore. They're gone. Um, so like all of that time and money spent. I mean, I don't know if that's exactly how it would work, but to me it seems like that that's kind of how it would be and i just like having that physical thing one it looks good on a shelf but two uh it's like you know i have the console to play it if i ever want to go back and play it i don't need like a computer or uh you know a newer console with saved data and all my games downloaded onto it i can just play the physical game it's there it's the original and it's mine the only thing that I like a little more about digital is not swapping the discs because, like, I'll be live yes. on and I can just click, just click into the next one, just click into something else. Because when you're going to get the disc and then, you know, it, it just does waste time. But it, it, there's not really any benefit, though. Like, when you're on your own, if you're not doing a stream and you just, you know, you can't be too lazy just to open a, open a case up and, and put pop the disc in. But, you know, when you are in stream, it does take away from something a little bit. Um you know for me like the the digital thing it almost feels like your your game is like on loan or something like a pawn shop has it they're like no no you you have the game it's yours you really own it you really own it don't worry but like something in the back of your head like you know maybe i don't maybe maybe something will happen like you said it just it just feels better to have that to have that physical disc now yeah. what, what game are we looking at here now uh Oh, so I don't have at, I don't have the stream up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. So it's like uh, it's a PS2 game with uh, some very uh, scantily clad girls. I had to throw. This <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's uh, the oh, what's it called? Megumi, I think her name is. She's like a Japanese model that was really popular back in uh, like the early 2000s. Apparently, they have uh, games in Japan. Uh, that are like photographer simulators, but it's more or less a uh, uh, a way for lonely Japanese men to to have their waifus, uh, and you can right. pause and and zoom in and slow down, and it's it's you get what the purpose of the game is, and it's just, I find that interesting, really, that it's even on PS2. There's a ton of them, right? And just for context, what what happened with the nosebleed there? <laughs> uh, I, I i do intros and stuff um so i you know in like anime when like uh, a guy will see a, like a pretty girl or like you know a very busty woman he'll he'll get like a nosebleed or something that that's just kind of where that came from <laughs> right isn't it isn't there an irony like because i'm obsessed with japan too i've always wanted to go to tokyo i'm Ooh. just the fuck of like a 20 hour plane trip or whatever insane amount it is <laughs> uh, isn't it isn't it there's an irony for me because it is such a technologically advanced, even above, even over New York society, 
very kind of strict corporate culture, very tightly packed city, but beautiful neon landscape. Yet what, what seemed like such uptight maybe people, but they let loose on this overly sexualized like manga comics and video games. It's like that's their like – that's their like uh, – <laughs> what do you call it like that's their 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 it, um it's like, it's really hard to they have a yeah for it. well well it's you know what i'm not on I, honestly i not even really sure of the logic behind it um japan is a very weird uh strange land and uh, um it, it, not everything that they accept uh, makes sense because they are a very very conservative country and they are um uh very kind of open like but not it's kind of like work hard play hard right like so they're so they're busting their ass at their nine to five corporate uptight job and then they let loose you know at night fucking sake bombs and you know school girl uniform and like you know sexualized clubs and you know, it's like it's like you know, it's really like excess almost. Like, yeah, J- Japan it. is I, about I get it. about that. Um, everything is convenient in Japan, um, and it's like you don't really understand that quite. Um, if you one, if you live in like the United States, and if you haven't been there, it's like everything is made to be convenient because life is very stressful uh, in Japan uh, because you're you're. Uh, put up on this pedestal to meet certain standards um, and a lot of people uh, that's why the suicide rate in Japan is very high because people just can't like handle uh, failure and if they do fail it's like kind of um, really really embarrassing and bad for uh, the people that were hoping that they would make something of themselves so yeah and I hope I hope you do not get offended by this but did you ever hear you look like a young David Cross a little bit Young David Cross. I have not heard that one. I've heard uh, Anthony. Um, oh, I can't remember his last name. Uh, I think he was like a comedian or something. Anthony Fifler something. Um, and I also get a, a thinner Jack Black at times. Jack Black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I also got Ego Raptor for a while when I actually had long hair uh, or hair in general. Who's that? I don't even know who that is. Ego Raptor, uh, he's like a uh, an older, he's a part of Game, or was, I think, part of Game Grumps. I don't know if he is anymore. Uh, YouTube channel. He made a really funny, like, uh, you know, cartoon video game uh, skits and stuff like that. Um, it, yeah, it's all, like, kind of older YouTuber stuff. Um, it doesn't really hold up now, though. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube has changed a, a lot, and not really for the better, in my opinion. <laughs> Right. You know, does it does it start to feel like everything's a fucking unboxing video these days or everything's a reaction video or everything yeah. is OCD lazy content or like a, a, almost like ADD content, right? Like people want something really quick, like fast food, almost like you kind of feel sick after you ate it. Yeah, it's um YouTube content now is meant for people who uh grew up grew up on vines and like short one minute videos um that's why i like tiktok i i don't understand tiktok like i i understand it but at the same time i i don't understand it i saw a thing the other day where some guy was mixing paints uh really well he would match the color to something and it was viral and i i was so confused as to why everything on TikTok, no matter how mundane and and boring it is, somehow goes viral. <laughs> but you have people on YouTube platforms making amazing content and getting no attention whatsoever, and it's just like it, it's a different crowd now. Um, and people have like been changing their content, which, like in my opinion, is is not very good. <laughs> the other thing is just not the same. And I'm 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 sure we can agree wholeheartedly on this is that that golden age of Nickelodeon in the '90s. I mean, these cartoons today don't don't hold a candle to what we had. They yeah, I, just... I pulled up the stream now so I can see what's going on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To follow along, right? Yeah, yeah. Jumping off point for everything, and the idea behind it is that you know after somebody watches an interview, they feel like they've spent an hour on your channel browsing. That's that's right. the whole. 
what happens is a lot of channels they'll have two talking heads and you don't you don't end up knowing what the fuck somebody's channel is like you maybe you know like what they're about you see the person but do you do you get a sense of their content and that's what we're trying to give people by having that is is just as much the focus as the dialogue we want people to walk away being like we just we just hung out on this guy's channel that we watched an interview with for an hour so oh man yeah this is it's funny seeing like because i i don't really go back and watch my older videos it's they're kind of hard to watch for me because my style and and uh i guess camera presence has has dramatically changed since i i've moved um, right and that, we're looking at that so like the background in in this video uh, or of me on camera is like my god my old apartment um that was like the when when I first started the channel was at this place. <laughs> and you've upgraded since then. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh well, we're gonna get a lot of this time machine back and forth. I hope you're all right with that. Oh, no, that's but fine. I, I wanted to give people. I like to say that any 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 guests we have, I'm we're giving them an appetizer sampler of somebody's channel. You know, getting a little bit of everything they do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, what were your? You know, if you had to, it looks like you're picking your your top what top eight here. You go A through F, like your 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 top. Yeah. Three. What ends up being in your in your top three? Uh God, this was so long ago. I want to say I put SpongeBob at an S, and I put, uh, maybe Ren and Stimpy at an A or an S or something. Uh, this is <laughs> that's so weird. And what does S stand for? Like, I thought A would be it, the best. Well, it, it's just like a t you know, like a a grade. I guess S is just the the best i mean okay. I, it's whatever you know i i've seen other uh that's that's like the the skin you use for when you do tier list videos so i don't know it's, s is just the best <laughs> speaking of spongebob though so i i was watching a documentary with my girlfriend and it was like about why did like the fall of nickelodeon or just like what why did the golden age end and they kind of they kind of blame and rave but like they rave and blame spongebob for whatever reason that did did that have something to, like tell me your take on that like because spongebob was so big right that it kind of took over everything and it yeah. kind of the landscape i mean Spon what's your take on that uh, i mean it, it's hard to say because i think spongebob uh, I, I can't remember when all of these came out i remember specifically when spongebob came out um because i remember seeing like they would give a uh, little 30 second clips of like an episode um you know before the show came out so you get a taste of what kind of comedy it was um and i think spongebob i don't know it just like transcended like a new age of, of uh cartoons and and the humor in cartoons um it definitely the at least the first couple seasons of spongebob um are are comedic gold um and i don't know if you've seen any recent episodes but they're fucking terrible right <laughs> they're, they're just like smooth brained like um slapstick it went, it went the way of the simpsons would you say that the you agree that the first 10 seasons of the simpsons were the best and the rest and the rest is kind of like drivel at this point or are you not a simpsons fan uh you want to hear something crazy i've never seen one simpsons episode oh wow yeah, I don't know. It just never happened. Dude, um, it's the '90s kid. How is this possible, Sean? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know that's probably like really cringy uh, for people to hear me say that, but um, I mean, I appreciate uh, the Simpsons. What? If that makes anyone feel better, <laughs> right? Did you play uh, the arcade game? Oh yeah, yeah. I pl I've played the games. Um, you know, Bart versus the world. Bart versus the space mutants. Um, the Hopefully. those are all hey, great. That's the best one. I mean, yeah, yeah, the Simpsons arcade game is great. Um, you know, I'm not too big on beat 'em ups, uh, but the older ones are very satisfying, especially if you play them on the arcade cabinet. Now you're putting Rocco's Modern Life uh, lower than <laughs> I would like, but that's oh. your what your opinion on that. I would yeah. put it higher than Doug, but you know, Doug, Doug, like I, I get where you're coming from. So you got Hey Arnold up there and Doug because they kind of had that high school or middle school relatability right it Where was it, uh it was a, a charming uh slice of life kind of thing and i and i i like that a little bit more than um you know the gross see, out rocco's weird abstract yeah stuff. i i don't mind the gross out stuff either but i went back and these are just my opinion on if they held up to me today like 
you know, oh. I went back and watched all of them and it's like Rocco's Modern Life. I was just kind of bored. Um, and then something funny would happen every once in a while. But more more often than not, I was just like, eh, this isn't as funny as I remember it. There's something about Doug, Sean, that I just wanted to kind of smack him a little bit. I wanted him to man <laughs> up a little bit. I know he had Quail Man. That was like his like alter ego, right? Yeah, yeah, Quail Man. And then there was I'm, like... Uh, I'm remembering uh, right. Yeah, he had like an Indiana Jones character too. Um, I don't know something about Doug. I just uh, I liked the voice actor um, Billy West. I think uh, is is his name. I think uh, my was Skeeter. And, and when they had that yeah. band on, what was the band called? The, the Beats. <laughs> yes, the Beats. Was- um, yeah, and then uh, you know Ren and Stimpy is I, that one still holds up, man. Like that, oh, sh- I- and that also has Billy West, I believe, um, doing the voices. Like, they had, like, you know, like, the log commercial, like, kind of mocking, like, kids, like, brain-dead kids' toys, like. Yep. <laughs> they were, that was ahead of its time, for sure. I mean, you know, that's that's something that's overused ahead of its time, but, like, that show really was cutting edge. Oh, yeah. um Just, like, uh, that, that classic, gross uh, Nickelodeon humor that is just non-existent now. It's, like, Nickelodeon is and Cartoon Network, uh, if we're being fair, is like 90% live action shows, at least from what I remember. I haven't watched either channels in a long time. Uh, but I remember a lot of, of like real people shows. And granted, there were live action shows uh, in the 90s, like Salute Your Shorts. I don't know. Do, do you remember Alex Mack? Oh, yeah. I had a crush like... on Alex Mack. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Who didn't? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe um... too. Because, like, that, those were the girls we saw then. We saw, like, these were the sitcom girls we saw, like Topanga, Winnie oh, yeah. Cooper, Wonder Years. <laughs> Topanga. <laughs> How would we not have a crush on them? That was, those were the only girls that we were seeing on TV for the shows we watched, you know? The Topanga was thick, and I didn't realize that's why I liked her back then. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know, just TV in general is like, I haven't watched it in so long because there's YouTube and Netflix and you don't really have to have cable. Does cable even exist anymore? I know, right? Well, I'll tell you what, though, knowing, like hearing uh, bits and pieces of your taste here, I do think you would like Stranger Things. That's what everyone keeps telling me. And it's like, watch, you can skip season two, save some time. Just watch season one and three because I think the second one sucked. There's three um, seasons of that show? Oh, yeah. What? And what I... you're going to love about by season three is they, they like, recreate, like, the ultimate 80s mall. Just, like, something out of, like, Fast Times at Ridgemont High or something, you know? Like oh, nice. Recreate it to the T. So it just feels like you're watching an 80s movie. So okay. I know the score for that show I would like. It's all synth wave and stuff like that, Um, which is, like, that's one of my favorite music genres. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Same here. Like... Tons of the, tons of the, anytime I make like a promo or a trailer for my channel, it's got Synthwave on it. Oh yeah. Love that stuff. And and like, um, I don't know. It's, they, they got the, it's, does it take place in the eighties? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. So they got like, I, I saw there was like ghost, but there was like Ghostbuster references and, uh, Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And I love all that shit. And everything is carefully, like, down to the, like, the they wouldn't put a sock on somebody if it wasn't from the 80s. Like, it's <laughs> really orchestrated to be everything time correct, you know, with, with the show. Right. Down to the toys and, like, the, you know, they got all the the exact, like, you know, Star Wars releases from that. Like, they don't, they take it very seriously. You can tell that the creators are, are big 80s nerds, you know, uh, yeah. of, of cult horror movies and stuff. But, um... Yeah, and Mandalorian, I think you would like. Favreau I know I would like it. it. Um, it's see the thing I like about Star Wars is when they break away from the the Empire, uh, Jedi, lightsabers, Sith, um, stormtroopers, Tie Fighters. I I that stuff bores me now. It, it's yeah. in every single Star Wars adaptation, like. I like the Mandalorian because it's more of the seedy underbelly kind of stuff of Star Wars. It's a, it's, you know, di- I don't know exactly where it takes place because I haven't seen it, but um, I, I like the stuff away. The The galaxy is so small in Star Wars, even though they like to think that it's this big, expansive world. It's like really not. 
Yeah. No, I think you, I think you would dig it. I mean, anybody that watches it, it kind of becomes like a fanatic of it. You know, it's not a perfect. Nothing is right. But when you compare it to the to the the newer movies. It's like you know, night and day. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a yeah. give it a watch. I got nothing better to do really. <laughs> Definitely give it like at least the first three four episodes. See how you okay. feel about it. For sure. That uh, you know that package that they have right now, the Disney Plus. The Hulu and ESPN Plus for for like twelve bucks a month is a pretty good deal. But what do you get with that? Uh, all the all the Hulu and uh, Disney stuff, in, especially is like for that three pack. It's not bad for twelve bucks. That's what I uh, subscribe to for for streaming, along with Netflix, of course. But Netflix is always lacking something. Like you know, it seems like you'll 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 remember something on there and then they take it away. Yes. Like, so, <laughs> and you're like, where'd it, that go? I finally want to watch it. Now it's gone. Yeah, they they like to um, put stuff on there and then take it off. And they, they, they switch around their stuff a lot more these days. I think a lot of people were complaining. It's like, oh, it's the same shit. And it's like, yeah, it was. Um, and I have Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime Video. And really, it's like, you know, there's not that big of a difference. You can there's really so watch. There's redundancy, right? Like, it's yeah. Like- fucking movies and that's why i like shutter uh the streaming service shutter it's because it's for it's like um uh really obscure uh horror movies and and like b movies they have like mini series okay. on there and stuff um you pay for that yeah it's like i think it's like 5.99 a month it's really cheap but you get a lot a lot of garbage but a lot of schlocky fun garbage you know what you would like that's free and it's like such a uh 90s tv throwback is the peacock I have Peacock. Uh, I have Peacock too. I have it with my internet that came like free. Cause that's just like tons of old shows on. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, no, the... you know some of the some of the actors feel a little like like Disney Channel. Some of the younger actors, but I do I do like it. Yeah, they um especially for the latest season that they did, they really hammed up the the eighties feel and all the dialogue and stuff. Just kind of feels so um uh i don't know campy and fun and it's over the top and i, I like that yeah and what's the, the what's the what's the blonde guy's name i'm so bad with, with names johnny johnny and, and what's the actor's name something uh pff, i don't know his real name i just know him as johnny but it, and and i like how they make him so, so likable in this one it yes makes it a more likable one they they give him uh, a more than one dimensional bully, and there's a lot of like really weird fan theories out there that Daniel is actually the the bully and and caused all of this shit to happen, which is kind of true. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, they they, they kind of reference that. So jumping to this Neo Geo Mini, I have the same thing. I was excited about it. I bought it. I wish I could tell you I played it since I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't really either. This was like, um, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I don't remember wh- when I got it, but I remember I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. That'd be a fun video because I love uh, Neo Geo and SNK stuff like that. Um, so and it comes with a ton of games on it. I don't know. I just like these little mini consoles, even though they're very pointless. I guess you could emulate <laughs> all of these games. Like right. you can emulate any game. I don't understand why. Like if you try to buy one of the Super Nintendo minis, they're like three hundred dollars now. It's like why? Oh my god. So yeah, but uh, the, you, the Neo Geo is fine. If, um, do you mess with retro pies at all? Yeah, I I have uh, a few actually. I have um, what's it called? I just have a Raspberry Pi, and then I have uh the O Droids. I don't know. If, I I've did done a couple videos on those. Um, they're... oh, you have those the handhelds. Yeah, the handhelds. Those are really cool. The Pi Four. Uh, that's what me and a couple of my other friends stream with, because it it does amazing Dreamcast now. It it can nail like ninety percent of the library. Uh, it can do most of the Saturn. And it can really do N64 well now, believe it or not. And that's a jump because the 3B couldn't do any of that shit. The 3B plus. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's I think actually that's the one I have. <laughs> so yeah, and, and what happens is, so the Pi Four, it does need to be slightly overclocked, which is the settings in the menu. But yeah, it can run Dreamcast flawlessly, and uh, same with N64. I mean, maybe there's a few games that are some, some some slowdown, but like even like Conker's Bad Fur Day, which was a problem for 
for the older ones that can run that all like you know the 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 higher performance dreamcast games it runs great which is really cool because it's cool to have those libraries in a little in a little pie box you know the raspberry pies are so fucking awesome um they more are. people should use them <laughs> and they're a bargain you know oh yeah they're they're super cheap you can do so much with them and they're they're tiny they like you can fit it in your pocket what are your memories with the neo geo since we're on this mini right now um you know for me it's like you know the pizza huts always had them yeah and they're big red cabs and it was like this unreachable thing because like the best i could get was like the samurai showdown genesis fucking port that was like as close as i could get to a neo geo because you know as you know they're like 500 bucks then and who and, and nobody had 500 bucks to spend in the 90s i mean unless you're you know you were selling drugs or something yeah yeah i didn't know anyone who had a the actual neo geo consoles right. let alone like a even a sega saturn uh and, and like the turbo graphic 60 i don't i don't remember anyone that i ever knew growing up having one of those um no. so my experience with neo geo is probably like yours where you'd like go to the pizza place or whatever and there'd be you know one of those big red cabinets with uh you know like metal slug on it or something like that and it was so cool because there's all those games that were big in japan but not here so like any anything you clicked on you're like you hadn't played it before really and uh you know oh because what we got in the states we got yeah you know street fighter 2 champion edition hit it was so big right then we jumped to like your mortal Kombat games but it was cool to see like the swords and the fighters like the samurai showdown yeah it was, it was, a, it was a cool departure definitely definitely i'm like a huge fighting game guy too so like I don't know, just all of that stuff is really appealing to me. The um in the in the graphics too. Like the Neo Geo graphics were just fucking great. So so classic looking. They were. Was very, very bit, right? That's what it was, thirty two bits. Uh maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's what the don't, system yeah, I don't know. At thirty two bits on that on that on the print ads and stuff. <laughs> um these these VHS tapes that they were promotional tapes for like the NCC four and stuff. Where the hell did people get these from? Did you get like a magazine and it came with it? Yeah, um, so I think the scene is about to pop up where I'm like uh, showing it. Oh god, I, I, this is so old. <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't have oh a my beard. God. Here. The beard I didn't. Had... My double chin is very prominent back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, here you go. So like you got the uh, the little insert or whatever, um, and then they, you'd send it in. They would send you one in the mail, or you could pick one up at like uh like a blockbuster um or, or okay yeah like stores like that they would give them away to like hey play this these are the games that are coming out and you can come back and buy them at our store or i almost feel like you could they'd give them away like a toys r us or something like come back and buy this yeah like that was that was the whole premise of it is like because you know the internet wasn't a thing so like the only way that people could you know find out what kind of new games were coming out or see actual gameplay footage is to like see these or you know have a nintendo power you could see screenshots um so yeah it was a really weird thing and it was like something that would only really make sense and i think i'm saying the exact same line that i'm saying in the stream right now on the video is uh <laughs> that um you know it was just you had to be there in order right. to get it <laughs> i love <laughs> you know I, mean? I love looking at the footage they built these like Crazy elaborate. sets of like like six fucking TVs in weird positions on top, of, like these futuristic rooms that the kids would go in. Oh, cool, man! Like like anybody would have that experience, like playing in these games, like some weird room with like six TVs mounted everywhere. Like I, I oh, love yeah. the stuff that they have on these. Yeah, definitely, and it's funny too because I I used I've worked at Nintendo for um a few years uh back in the day and. uh it's just really funny um, your opinion of Nintendo. And I don't want to say anything too negative because I don't know if they have assassins out there that are listening. Right. It's Nintendo. So you never know. Um, but it was uh, I was a tester for uh, like three, maybe four years. And uh, it. Oh, was, wow. It was very, very brutal. <laughs> well, you, you know, now I got to ask about that now. You had to tell me. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Nintendo or whatever you can tell. Um, so I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm fine. I'm so off the radar now. It's been a long time. Um, uh, so yeah, I was a tester. Um, I was on multiple projects. If you've ever played the Wii U version of, uh, the Wind Waker, Zelda Wind Waker port, 
Uh, I was one of the testers on that. Um, you remember a game that I don't know if it ever came out. It's it was notorious for being very very bad. It was Devil's Third? It was uh, like a Devil May Cry sort of game. Sounds um, familiar. I was on that. I was on the new Super Mario Bros. Uh, the Super Mario Bros. 3D Land. Um, the Super Smash Brothers 4, I think it was. The one that was also on the DS. Um, so I got to like see, so, see all... As an insider, why are they not doing more with the Donkey Kong stuff? Um, I I don't really know. Like they they when I was there, they I think they had Tropical Freeze. That was like the newest one, right? Um, Donkey Kong. I think for like newer gamers, it's not something that's as appealing as like Mario. So they tend to like keep him bundled inside other games rather than having his own game. Like we'll probably never get another Donkey Kong Country. That makes me much... like that. I'm actually gonna cry right now. That you yeah, said that. as as much as like there is a a demographic for it still, like you know the, the people that are, um, I don't know how old you are. I'm I'm 32, gonna be 33 this year. Uh, and, 37. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So um, you you know it definitely better than me. Uh, but yeah, I just don't think that kids today care about Donkey Kong, let alone like know enough to like, hey, this is a Nintendo game with a monkey. Ah, where's Mario? Where's Splatoon? Where's right. Zelda? And I'm not a fan of the uh, the Breath of the Wild Zelda games, so I'm just like, they're coming out with a second one of that. I'm just like, uh I just picked that one up recently that I haven't played it yet. And what's funny is just this Friday, I finally got a Wii U. I've had the Switch, but I wanted to pick up a Wii U to uh, hopefully eventually mod it uh, for streaming purposes. But um, yeah, so I'm a newbie with the with the, with the the Wii U. Yeah, the Wii U and, does not get enough credit, I think. It was a pretty good console, but I think um, Nintendo kind of uh, shot themselves in the foot when they put it out because it confused people. It's like, it's called the Wii U, and the console before that was the Wii, and it's just an upgraded Wii console, so yeah, right. it didn't sell well. <laughs> but it was the fun, I, yeah. The parents were all like, you can hear them, like, you already have a Wii. Do you have what one of those Wii's? But you already have one at home. Yeah. When the Wii came out, I was working at EB Games when that was still a thing. And uh, we would have, like, parents come in all the time and they would say, like, the Y, the the Y. -E. Do you guys have the Wii, the Wii console? I was like, uh, no, we're sold out because Nintendo. And, and it always, immediately when I heard about it, it was going to be called that. I was like, so you're going to have to tell people you're playing with your Wii. <laughs> Your Wii, yes. Wii Wii. Now, like something else. <laughs> You're playing with your, 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 what, oh, wait, what were they called? Jo not the Joy, no, that's the Switch. The Joy Cons are the Switch. The Wii, just the Wii remote, I guess. Playing like with the, my nunchuck, ma. Yeah. The nunchucks. Suck my balls, ma. I'm playing with my Wii. <laughs> the nunchucks, too. I love it. Yeah. Tell you know, me I'm about, a... oh, I worked in a, in the, in the music industry in New York for a little bit. So, like, there was perks, but it was just like getting free CDs and, you know, the, 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 um, like the music video DVDs they would put out. But like, what was, um, did you get any perks at, you know, Nintendo that I'm, I'm hoping that they were going to let you keep like some games here and there. You're testing them. So did you get to keep them when you tested them? No. Nintendo is very, 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 very strict about, I bet, stuff leaving the, uh, the testing area. Um, but we did get perks. Um, we would be able to buy games a week early uh, from the, the Nintendo store that was on campus. Um, and that was kind of cool. Uh, and, you know, you got to, if you were a tester, you got to play games early. And uh, like for the new, when that new Super Smash Brothers came out for the DS and the Wii U um, or the 3DS and the Wii U, I, I got to see all of the characters like months and months and months before everyone else. So like, I hope Nintendo's not listening, but I would I would tell my roommate because he's a huge uh, Smash Bros player. He would play in like tournaments and stuff, um, and uh, yeah, it was really cool. Like getting to tell him because you weren't allowed to talk, even like with other testers in the testing area, you weren't allowed to talk about the game with other testers who w weren't on the game. Wow. It was very very strict. So like. This is this is how crazy Nintendo was, and I understand why they did this particular thing. When the 
uh, Ruby and Sapphire for Pokemon remakes on the 3DS came out. Yep. Uh, one, I was sitting across from one of the, uh, the, the testers that were doing it, and one particular tester got caught uh, taking uh, screenshots and video of the gameplay. And this was like six months before the game was even supposed to come out. And he posted them on his Tumblr. Oh, and Nintendo's, Nintendo's uh, internet hackers uh, found this out. I'm sure it wasn't really that hard. And they fired him immediately. They blacklisted him from being able to work at any sort of video game company oh, uh, wow. or, or video game retail outlet like GameStop or anything like that. So he basically, and they sued him. So, oh God. Yeah, he, he got nuked. Um, and uh, it was kind of funny to me, to be honest. Well, if it was Apple, they would have really kicked the door on with a SWAT team, right? Remember that? Remember that fucking story about the iPhone or whatever? What? There was like a there, so there was an iPhone. I don't know which one it was, but I remember like somebody left it at a bar and then somebody stole it or something or so, somehow it got out. And Steve Jobs didn't want it leaked or something about it. In like like a I don't know a SWAT team like they kicked in this dude's door. <laughs> somebody in somebody in chat uh, must have must have heard this story, but I remember hearing that, and it was and it looked really bad for for Jobs and Apple at the time. Like they they just looked like fucking thugs, like the mafia <laughs> kicking down people's doors. Yeah, it literally happened. They kicked down the guy's door. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, uh, I don't know Steve Jobs. Uh, never knew what kind of a person he re- really was. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he was a pretty scary dude if he got on his bad side. I would not oh, yeah. want to mess with him. You you would probably that would be the last thing you do. <laughs> yeah, it was before the phone came out, and they didn't want any of that stuff getting leaked. You know how they it gets crazy about, or it was at that time about leaking the specs out or something. I think it's more so that the um, the competition doesn't have a have a um, what do you call it? Advantage, know, like ed- yeah, advantage or something. Copier technology, or who knows what, or you know, have the same specs or try to beat their specs to the market because that'll uh, you know kill their sales or whatever. So, oh, but yeah. uh, yeah, that just made me think of that. Um, we're looking at uh some miniature toys from the nineties here, some Mighty Max. Which oh, yeah. had to be some of the easiest toys to lose shit for, because these <laughs> yeah. are microscopic figures in these in these things. I know the ones that I have aren't even complete. I'm surprised they had even one Mighty Max little uh, figurine with it. Um, God, I I had so many of these growing up. I all of the if you know what if my mom didn't sell all of my stuff at garage sales like every like six months, um. I would probably have so much stuff worth <laughs> like it's weight in gold now. Like, oh my God. Thanks, Unfortunately, man. I'm uh insane enough that I bought a lot of my stuff back, most of it back, Sean. Unfortunately. Yeah. I've slowly and, but surely uh, been doing the same. The thousands in bills to to show for it. <laughs> uh, that I've luckily paid off since. But uh yeah, uh, like re- rebuilding my Masters of the Universe collection, the Ghostbusters, the Turtles. Yeah, it adds up quick, man, and it's an addiction. It's plastic crack. Especially now with, like, okay, so I've noticed that video games and old toys have skyrocketed over the last two years, and it's fucking ridiculous, and it makes me so angry. I blame toys that made us, um, (laughs) because everybody's watching those and, like, I want my Turtles back. I want He-Man back. Yep. I want Ghostbusters back. So, uh, and I then everybody on eBay that finds anything thinks it's all fucking worth its weight in gold. Yep, charge three times what it's supposed to be going for. Thrift yeah. stores are doing that now. They'll they'll look that shit up on eBay and and price retro games at full right. price. And you don't do that at a, a thrift store. What? <laughs> yeah, and, and even Goodwill now they're putting stuff on uh, their own. Uh, they're putting stuff in auctions now. Goodwill. It's supposed yeah. to be deals there. Not put it in that. an auction. It's so, so annoying. It's like, come on, this is a thrift store. This is for poor people. All right. Yeah. How am I supposed to feed my, my video game addiction when I have to pay full price? All right. <laughs> Bummer. I oh, swear man, this, what's happening. This is a fucking classic nerd layer video. Oh man. <laughs> Throwback? <laughs> Yeah, oh jeez. What handhelds did you have as a kid since we're on uh, some uh, Game Boy Advance here? 
I was very, very fortunate enough, God bless my parents, <laughs> uh, that uh, I was able to have, because I had a, a younger brother, so, and me and him did not get along very well as kids, except for when it came to video games. Uh, so the way my, my mother would be able to control that sibling rivalry was to, um, so like, when Pokemon came out, there's two versions. Um, that was a huge, like, trend back in the handheld days where there would be two different versions of games. So my mom was like, okay, well, I'll get you this version, and I'll get you this version. You guys can play together. And that's kind of how it was. So, like, I had a Game Gear. My brother didn't have a Game Gear, uh, but I had the Sega consoles and the and some Nintendo handhelds, and he had the Nintendo consoles. So it was... Um, a split household as far as like I was the Sega kid, he was the Nintendo kid. Right. He had a Game Gear, did you say? I he, I had the Game Gear. You had the Game Gear. Yeah. How about the battery life on those? You could get at least three minutes out of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I yeah. think you could start screen of a game and then it would die. And it only yeah. needed batteries or whatever. It needed six fucking double A batteries. And it's like <laughs> that's like twenty dollars at the at the store. Yeah, I mean, imagine, imagine the look on your dad's face when you, you got to tell him you need six double A's. Yeah, I, you know, I'd steal him out of, like, all the appliances in the house, yeah. like the TV remote and stuff. And I, you know, that moment where my dad realized that there weren't any batteries in the remote, he would go, Shoo! and I just hear him <laughs> up, hear it from upstairs. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's classic. And then there's, like, <laughs> what was funny to me is all these goofy-ass attachments for the handhelds, right? You had that fucking magnifying glass bullshit for the the game boy remember that yes snap on that big lens thing yeah you could like goofy. you like it had a light a built-in light on it i miss the warm light days um you know you go on like long car trips and if you didn't have one of those you gotta like you know you see that old uh meme or whatever it's like uh i'm this old i had to play video games on road trips with the street lights to light the screen and it was like dude that was a real thing yeah you like driving by, you pass the street light, you could see the screen, you get to play for a second, and then you have to wait. <laughs> I guess like the the um capacitors or whatever and all those game game gears are are pretty much done at this this point. Like they're I know a lot of people that, that try to mod those or fix them up, they have to do a capacitor swap or mm -hmm. put a better screen in them because the screens weren't very good or whatever. Yeah, the screen, like at the time, it was so badass to have a backlight. Oh my yeah. gosh. Granted, the bat, the the playtime you know you you would get would maybe be like three or four hours um total on six batteries, uh, oh. if that. So like uh yeah, the, but the, now if you look back, the screen is just so dim, and it I don't know like people put in new screens, they put in uh new thing. I've seen people put in um rechargeable battery packs in their Game Gear, which I thought was fucking cool. I always had to have like the translucent stuff. Like I I I had like the play it loud. Game Boy, yes. the clear one. I used to love yep. that. Um, something about the '90s. Everything had to be see-through. I miss uh, that, man. More things should be uh, transparent. Yeah, it's cool seeing all the the inner guts of stuff. Oh my god, are we? Oh, it's the. Oh, is this a cat uh, cafe video? Oh man, dude, I love cats. <laughs> I had to put this in here. Hell I yeah! Had two videos I made called. Uh, chonkers like like faux horror movies where I, I compile all these cats attacking people into a, a film trailer. But yeah, I, I love cats, man. I'm a, I'm a cat guy, not a dog Same. guy. So I had to put this in. Tell me a story <laughs> about this place. Uh, so this place was in. Let's see. I think I went 2000. This was 2019. Uh, yeah, because I was with my brother. And um, it's a little cat cat. They have little animal cafes all over Tokyo. There's like hedgehog cafes. There's baby owl cafes. There's bunny cafes, Shiba puppy cat uh, cafes. And I'm a cat guy, so I wanted to go to the cat cafe. And yeah. as you can see, uh, it is it is very very elaborate and and fancy and cool. And um, is yeah, everybody all the... in there? What's that? that? Was everybody sneezing in there from the cat hair? No, no, um, there wasn't that many people in there, and you could actually, uh, they had N64s, um, that you could sit down and play, uh, 
yeah, so it was kind of cool. I, I just wanted to pet the cats. Um, so you could get like cat lollipops and you could like all the cats would run up to you. Uh, there would be a scene in a minute where um, I'm sitting there and there's just like cats surrounding me. They almost and, had them uh, in like bird cages, like in the in the in the sky. Like, yeah, yeah. They're like cool. there's little. Yeah, you could like uh, they could sit on these like little platforms like this and they just chill. And I've never seen so many cats be so calm around each other. There was like 15 cats there. That's awesome. I think I think more people are cat people in in, in Japan. Yeah, it's they're Asian. they're easier um to take care of because they're you know self sufficient. You can leave a cat alone and they'll just be fine. Uh, but with dogs, they need to get out and run around. And all of the apartments in at least in the city area are very very small. Um, so people. And what that's is why... on the lollipops? I forgot what you said. This is like a catnip lollipop. It's like I don't I don't know what this is. Um it was just like a cat like popsicle. It was cold. Um it was like a popsicle. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there they are. Oh, begging um, for it. Yeah. Uh, it was great, man. Uh I had so much fun. Um we went to other cafes too, but this one specifically I I wanted to film just because I love cats. We don't have anything cool like this in the states. Yeah, not really. I thought there was a cat cafe in Seattle. Um, I've never been to it though, and I guarantee you, it's it's out of business now because of COVID. You know why? I uh, we we've had a another um streamer. Uh, you, you heard of Pac Man case? Um, uh, maybe. I'm not too big on stream. Like, I don't know that many streamers. Okay, he makes content too, but um, he's another guy in Seattle that we we had on the show. Um. From, dude, from anybody I see, the it seems like you guys got great stores. And I mean, what's the game hunting scene out there like? I mean, Man, I, it, it, better it's than pretty most good. Places. I uh, the the video game companies out there. Yeah, um, there's a. This is a Washington is like a very very nerdy state. Um, you know, we have Microsoft here. We have a ton of the big video game companies here, and there's a lot of gamers in this state. Um, and all of them love to collect video games. So, like, like I said, within the past two years, um, finding stuff to buy is very, very difficult because it's all getting bought up uh, by you know all other collectors and collecting. Really, I, I remember collecting video games when it wasn't really the mainstream, and now it's gotten so mainstream. And there's just I don't know, man. It, it's slim pickings these days. Yeah. All that's left. And thrift stores is like NBA 2K12. <laughs> yeah, all the FIFA games and all the, the Madden games. Maddens, like 10-year-old Maddens. Connect games that nobody wants because Connect sucks. Right. I'm glad they, they got rid of that. Bottom of the barrel. Crapola. Do you have any of the new consoles? I have yet to find any. Like, how is this even possible? Like, that there aren't any consoles to buy except for yeah. from shady fucking scalpers who are charging an arm and a leg. I know what a fail, and and like, why do the companies seem to not care? Because they don't care as long as they're selling anyway, and like the bots are buying them up. I, yeah, I mean, they're probably making money from all of the bots buying them up, but it's just like no one has them. Like, you can't just go into a store and buy one. Like, you have to go online. They'll they'll announce it, and then you have to get your place in line and online. Um, and yeah, it's just ridiculous. Like, I'm not well, gonna spend that much money. And here's the thing with me, like, I'm the cheap guy that wants, like, the second version of the console with the bundle with the game for, like, $250 uh, on Black Friday. I'm mm -hmm. more of that guy than, like, give me the oversized first-gen first, first gen console that uh, overheats or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I kind of want, want to jump in two years in. And when there's actually a game library to, to choose from, like, you know, not just 10 games that are out or whatever. Yeah, the I was talking to my roommate about this the other day, and consoles don't look cool anymore. They do now. Again, I think the new consoles look awesome, but there was a period for a while where the consoles were just so boring looking, and I miss that that old fat PS2. Like I, that's yeah. the one I use for like game reviews and stuff when I'm gathering footage. Um, I love my old PS2, my old thick Xbox, and like. There's just a period where like consoles just uh, they were just a box, 
Um, and it just looks so about boring. The, the placement of the vents too, like you know yeah. the place of the vents on the PS2, uh, two or the on the Xbox. There's something about the vents on it, or like the the vents on the Genesis. The way they do that, it's very sleek. Yeah, yeah, and it's that's like part they, of the appeal of it. They look cool. All those edges, and um, you know the the PS2, in my opinion, the original is one of the sexiest looking consoles. Um, I know it's probably weird to say, but it is. It's it's fucking slick. It's cool, you know. It looks like um, like a skyscraper. I like kind of the purple on the on the the PS2 logo. Yeah, that old PS2 logo is like gradient, like purple and blue. It was so cool looking. And the Xbox was stylish too, you know, that the green circle in the middle. It looked it looked kind of like an alien ship or something. And, and that's when... what I'm saying with like the new Xbox. It looks so badass. It's got that green glow on top. Yeah, and it, it, it looks like some sort of like alien black monolith or something. It looks so cool. It looks like a pimped out PC. I don't like the way the PS5 looks. <laughs> it looks like Seto Kaiba from uh from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> and it's just like weird bends in it. Weird. It looks like a book, um, kind of, you know, with like yeah. the, the harder outside cover and back. Um, I don't know. I think it looks it, it. I like it better than I like the PS4. I thought the PS4 was really boring looking. Look kind of like a pyramid. The bottom. Yeah. Pyramid. Yeah. It looks like the first like couple steps of a pyramid. It's like, eh, that's kind of cool. But it looks yeah. like a fax machine or it, like the PS3 looks like a straight up fax machine. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I, I kind of like the new uh, PS5. Um, even the, well, not so much the the S model um, Xbox. It's like it just looks like the other one. It's got like a speaker on the top, or I don't know what that is. When I when I bought the PS3s, the slim one, something about the plastic on that was kind of thin, and as it would heat up, like the first couple minutes, it would kind of sound like uh like um like acorns hitting like a tin roof, like as the <laughs> Expanded. It was really random. Was it the top loader? It was not the top loader. It was the one in the middle. So the, the first PS3 Slim was like that mirrored uh, part where you put the disc in. Oh, okay. Yeah. It kind of like had a hump to it. And then it right. had that it had like a mirrored finish uh, where you put the disc in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very kind of boring looking. I agree. And just said the, the PS3 on top. Um, but yeah, it, like as the plastic would expand, I don't know... <laughs> Why, when you first turned it on, it would like make that noise. <laughs> Those things but, overheated um, so so easily. Yeah. Um. Why do you think you know you know what always confuses me? Why Why does Sony not give a fuck about backwards compatibility? On most, uh, it's that's a that's a hard question to answer. I'm not exactly sure. I think they they want to emphasize the the new rather than uh, trying to rely on the old and like i understand their their point of view of not having the backwards compatibility but like why not just like why, why not? not have it in there i mean the thing is fucking huge you could fit whatever components needed in order to make it backwards compatible but i don't know i like that the xbox is that's why i want the xbox over the the ps5 because it has some backwards compatibility right yeah, I mean, I don't know why that's important to me. Um, what year was this Japan trip? How did this come about? Uh, talk to me about. We actually had one one of the earliest interviews we had. We had another guy that went to Japan, and uh, he had all the footage from it. it was amazing. I love seeing this footage. Uh, that's too many questions to ask you at once. But how many years ago was this, and how expensive was it? Let's start with that. This was two thousand and eighteen, um, and one day I was just like, cause I'd always wanted to go to Japan. So one day I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I got money. I'm going to book a trip. And it turns out my friend who's holding the camera in this video was going the exact same time. So he was, I'm just like, all right, cool. We can meet up there. And, um, it was, let's see. I stayed there for two weeks, um, in Tokyo and I booked my ticket with, uh, the hotel bundle. Oh my God. I can't even fit through the aisles. That's how small these stores are. Claustrophobia? Um, Any claustrophobia? Yeah. Yeah, everything is really, really, you know, Japanese people are f f a lot smaller than me, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it was like 1200 for the two week trip, but that's with the, you know, there and back flight ticket and then the hotel. Oh, wow, that, that sounds like a bargain. 1200 that's it? 
Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it seems like a lot at first, but when you get to Japan, everything is really cheap, um, unless you go to, like, Super Potato, like where I'm at now, and this is kind of the touristy game shop to go to. Right. Uh, so everything's a little bit um, higher priced than normal if you were to go to, like, some place like a book-off. I don't know if there's any other book-offs in the world other than Japan. I heard there was some in, like, New York. I don't know if that's true You ever true run into, um, like, Metal Jesus at the conventions out there? Uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, the last convention that I was able to go to, uh, before conventions, um, uh, closed down because of COVID was the Portland Retro Gaming Expo in, uh, Portland, obviously. And, um, I met up with my buddies, uh, Chris from Telesplash Gaming, uh, and Rob and Wes from Gaming Off the Grid. And, uh, Telesplash yeah, we were... is going to be our guest, um, I think I was next gonna... Saturday I... or the Saturday after. I was going to mention you should get guys should get Chris on here. He's like literally one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He's, he's super charming. I love him. Um, and all the, all the retro refresh crew. I love all those guys. Um, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we went to the convention. We did our thing. We were all on the podcast for uh hair of the dog cast. If you are familiar with them, they're uh, awesome dudes, really cool guys. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we went to the bar afterwards and Metal Jesus was there with, uh, John Riggs, John Hancock, Kinzilla, um, and a few other people. And we all just chilled there and, uh, hung out. It was pretty fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> they all seem super friendly. I mean, they come off like that. Yeah. For them. I don't, I don't know them personally. Um, right. But uh, they they seem nice. Uh, I've I think I've talked to John Riggs the most, and then not I wouldn't even say talk to him. It's more of like he'll comment on a Facebook post of mine or something, right? Um, but uh, yeah, Metal Jesus. Uh, I don't really watch his content. Um, it's I mean I don't really watch anyone's content. I feel really bad saying that. It's like I make content, so I'm not really watching content like mine that i'm making i watch weird shit on youtube so um well, yeah because you're not because you're not um influenced by it then like maybe maybe it's like if you're if you're too engaged with everybody else's channel maybe it maybe it um informs some of your work and and maybe a way you don't want where whether it like wh whereas like when you're not maybe like you're, you're in your own zone so like nothing you're gonna make what you make uninfluenced by other people's work yeah, and like, you know, there's those things where like if you have your favorite gaming YouTuber, you take certain aspects from that and kind of emulate it because, you yeah. know, it, it's, you know, you like what they're doing and you want to do kind of that same thing. Like, I really like Gaming Historian. I think uh, he's oh, yeah. in my in my top five, like, favorite YouTubers. Um, uh, Lazy Game Reviews, LGR, if you know who that is. Um, I watch, I, I've seen every time he went to a Goodwill. Oh yeah, yep. That that's uh, uh, LPR scripts. <laughs> I watch every single one. That is one of my. That's where I, I started the the whole idea is because you know it's like I want to do that you know and I I think uh, with his over one million subs he's not going to care if I steal his content. So <laughs> anything he sees with wood grain and goodwill he wants to buy. Anything that's oh dude, he's one of the wood grain men. I am one. I am a wood grain lover. <laughs> I love that shit. Well, yeah, he's a cool guy. I love uh seeing him put together those old old freaking pcs and the pc builds are great um he's just got a really nice uh voice and you know he's from north carolina i've i've been to north carolina i love north carolina it's one of my one of my favorite states to visit um so like, all that I... stuff all those pc games in a storage uh yep unit. that like was that blew a... my mind when when i seen that all, all those all those games in there yeah, for the longest time, he would, like, film in his storage unit, and everyone right. didn't know that, and he, like, revealed it, and they're like, oh, the magic's gone, and he's like, I don't understand where people got that. <laughs> right. Um, he just wanted, yeah. to, he wanted to not have his house look like a hoarder house. <laughs> yeah. It's not something that bums me out about this. So, this didn't the Sega thing shut down? This building here? Yeah, I think um, a bunch of them. Did. I know Sega sold. I don't know if it's shut down. I think it might just be rebranded. Um, they sold their all their arcade stuff to some company or something. Oh, I miss Japan. This is making me very, very nostalgic. I Dude, I would kill it. I would kill to go there. <laughs> like I said, just well, I mean, talk me through. How did you get through that plane trip, man? 
Um, so yeah, I was by myself, and I have a fear of flying in planes. Um, so do I. And going over the Pacific Ocean uh, for uh, the the flight was twelve hours, and I had a um at least for this trip I had a layover in L.A., which I don't know if you've ever been to LAX. It is fucking the worst airport. Oh my god. Um, and it was miserable trying to navigate through there. But yeah, the plane ride was really, really long because I didn't have anyone to talk to. And the two people sitting next to me were, uh, uh, I, I'm assuming they were Japanese. And I didn't want to like strip, strike up a conversation because I felt like that would be very awkward for them. <laughs> so yeah. I just sat there and, you know, I'd watch the, you know, uh, the little TV screens that they have. And I just took some sleeping pills and slept through most of it. It was, it was a long, what? long sit. Sean, what the hell are some of these games? This with the circle here and this guy's like tapping all over the screen. Is this some kind of rhythm game? I don't know what this game is. Um, Japan has so many rhythm games that we don't get over here. And I was just, I'm fascinated by uh, the Japanese kids that are just amazing at these games. And I actually got to see one live. It was, it was very cool. How the hell are they all like savants, like like so smart in there? And so it's like, it's like it, it, does it, is it genetic? Is it just that they like, <laughs> tr- like have these kids in school all day? Like what 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 is the secret sauce here? It's why they make wanna, us all stupid in the states. It, it's like I said, it's a um, it, it's the way they're brought up. It's the way that they're they're taught to to focus and and do good and 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 their way of thinking is just on a different level from uh most americans so it's like i don't know they just get things uh they just get it you know like it's hard it's hard to explain i don't know what it is oh the school girls i, I think i zoomed in on them. yeah right <laughs> you got you can't have japan without the school girls there were so many school girls. And the funny thing is, there's no fat people in Japan. It was I was very, I very awkward. Uh, they're all I was, fit. They're, they're all, all smart. fit. <laughs> they're making us look bad. There's no fat people in oh man. Uh funny they're story. Always walking real everywhere. We went to this like bar that you know you had to take an elevator to get up from the street. And it was a small elevator, and there was me um, and my other American friend, and uh, we met someone uh, somewhere who was with us. He was also American. And we got on this elevator, and it wouldn't go because the weight capacity was too much. And so we had... <laughs> we, because it's not meant for three fat Americans. It was meant for, like, uh, like five uh, Japanese people. Uh, and so we were or the equivalent of five Japanese people. <laughs> so, uh... Tell us about some of your friends here. This is what we were just talking about. Uh, we had gaming oh, yeah. off the grid, Telesplash. Russ Lyman, I'm familiar with him. He was the Connecticut guy. I, I used to live in Connecticut, yeah. Florida now. Oh, yeah, I love Russ. He's such a nice guy. Um, He's got that iconic voice. Russ Lyman here. <laughs> oh, you got Linda. We've been meaning to have Linda on the show. We had uh, we had Captain Algebra on the show uh, for an interview. We had uh, Jay Love. Oh yeah, yeah, I love those guys. Um, all these guys, you, any one of these guys would be great to have on there. Linda's great. Um, DC Radia. Oh yeah, there's Captain Algebra. Um, Directed by David Cronenberg. I didn't expect to see that at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> if it was yeah. directed by David Cronenberg, there'd be like some bizarre, like killer kids or somebody <laughs> bleeding or using tele telepathic powers to blow somebody's head off. It'd be body horror or, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I show I show that scene when I when I when I'm I go to my parents once a week I drive up there I've shown my dad that scene because it makes me crack up so much some of those scenes in scanners where they're like <laughs> oh yeah they're using the power to like kill each other at the end the <laughs> guys, guys like things are popping out and then That's there's that of... scene in the theater where he blows the guy's head up. I think that was uh, Michael Ironside who was in that that famous scene. <laughs> He's the one who does it. Um, the dude's head just fucking explodes, and it's so eighties and it's so practical effectsy. And I miss that shit, man. The, I, movies I don't laugh do that. that. I don't even know why. And, and and then my mom's of course grossed out and like you know runs out the room when when that. <laughs> when that scene. I got to watch. Um, it was weird. My parents were really weird. They did. They. They wouldn't let me, like, watch things that had, like, sex in it or whatever. I mean, obviously, I mean, I wouldn't let my kids watch anything with sex in it if I had kids. 
Right. Uh, but they let me watch like, you know, anything that was rated R horror movie or stuff like that, you know, because they told me it's like, it's not real, you know, like you don't need to be afraid. You won't, you don't need to have nightmares over. It's not real. It's all for, for fun and movies and stuff like that. And so I got to see so many great movies as a kid, uh, RoboCop, um, Classic. The fly, yeah, the fly. Uh, you know, just all that cool stuff. The fly stuff. grosses me out a little bit. I would. That. <laughs> That's a David David Cronenberg movie right there. Yep. Now, why did we put Save the Bell so low? Is it because of the the awkward bad acting? It because Save by the Bell is terrible. Even though I enjoy it right. from time to time, it is it is terrible. And I don't know if you know the history behind that show. It is very fascinating. And there's a documentary, I think, that was out about it. Um, very, very interesting to see all the behind the scenes. Were they uh, all banging each other? Is that one of them, the stories? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's something that probably happens. Uh, that's what they, they said. Um, so, yeah, all this stuff is really, really weird. I think the two, uh, uh, you know... Um... Zach and Zach and Slater definitely are still like friends. I've seen an interview with them and they're the way they're talking to each other. It's like, they're still like best friends or something, but I know, I know Dustin diamond, uh, R R I P now. Yeah. Yeah. But yep, I know rip. He had nothing good to say about the show. And he yeah, probably... he, he was the youngest on the show and I know he got bullied a lot. Um, right. Or, or dis- uh, it was more like they dismissed him because he was right. a lot younger. So, you mean um, it wasn't fun for him to just get uh, pointed and laughed at every episode? Right. Well, that'd have been a blast. Like Zach, Zach Morris on that show, he was a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> was he? He was. It, he was. He was the worst. Or the actor actually was shitty to everybody, or just in the script. Uh, I think he, at least in the show, his character was shitty. To, he was a very selfish character. But I, I'm. I don't I, know what the actor was like off camera. I'm sure he was a fairly nice guy yeah mark um, mark gosler or something yeah yeah i think they always had him scheming people conning people or yeah he was a he was a huckster you know a wise cracking huckster cheating his way ahead a little, little charlatan in the making you put seinfeld really up high that that makes me happy i love seinfeld i do love especially me some seasons, seinfeld especially seasons like I want to say like five through nine, and and I like the last two seasons even after Larry left, Larry David left. Uh, the yeah. Writing. But there's some because there's something about the first four seasons. They're they're good, but it's like the cast didn't gel perfectly yet. Like the cast was still a little bit. They getting, were still getting... finding their characters, I think, in yeah. those early seasons. And once they found them, they're the God George Costanza. My God, I every time he's on screen, brilliant. I love that guy. Jason, you know, I, lo- I love Jerry Alexander. Seinfeld. Yeah, Jason Alexander. I love Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, you know, people can you know make fun of his. Uh, I, I don't know what the observational uh, humor. What's the deal with what? airline food? <laughs> I, you know, stuff. I I think that stuff is is stupid and funny, and I, I don't know. There's just something nice about it. I like. Ever see uh, comedians in cars? All those. All those yeah. Up- Oh yeah, that that was pretty fun to watch. I I like all that stuff. He's got cool cars and talking to celebrities. You know, I just love seeing all these actors still doing stuff. You know, yeah, Boy Meets World classic. As we already talked about, Topanga, Topanga. Young, young crushes. Yes, Boy Meets World was great. Uh, you know, funny fun fact: uh, the dad in that was a character in that V um, miniseries that we were talking about earlier. Oh, really? Yeah, he was one of the characters. He was one of the scientists in that. Gotcha, <laughs> Mister Feeny. Full, full, full House is pretty low. I like the show, but pretty corny. Yeah, baseball. You know, Dan, Dan, uh, uh, Sat, Bob Saget's always like, you know, got a got a speech for one of the daughters at the end. Now Michelle, <laughs> this is what you know. <laughs> he always sits down by the bed and gives her a speech. Like it just starts to be like um, uh, Groundhog Day with that show, but still yeah, love it, it for like, whatever reason. And the best part I think about... I just want to live in San Francisco in one of those houses. <laughs> That'd be great. I think they're still there, right? And they're only like five million dollars now. Five million. Uh, the rent is five million dollars a week. Um, <laughs> no utilities included. <laughs> So we got uh, 
I'm I'm wondering where these are gonna land. I, I'm guessing I'm gonna guess that home improvement lands pretty far down. I don't I think, think that's, that's a top. B. I think home improvement's a B. Yeah. I love home improvement. It was good, but I knew it wouldn't be on the like the very top. No, no, I think I think the one that I put up top is Roseanne. Um, I love that show. All that dry humor uh, and sarcastic humor is just like right up my alley. I love John Goodman on that show. Oh yeah, John Goodman, best best TV sitcom dad ever. Yes. How about the like the the one of the last? Or I stopped at like the maybe the fifth or sixth season. What's when they have the blowout and he like throws the Godzilla? They, like, <laughs> That's in. Yeah, yeah, that, that I want to say that was actually uh, like season five, four or five or something. Um, and the the show tanked in in my opinion. It just went downhill the longer it was on. They win the lottery, and the ending of it's really really what everybody's, bad. Yeah, yeah, that's they, what everybody says. Um, so yeah, the the early seasons when it's you know late eighties, uh, that that's where all the good stuff is in Roseanne. Same with Fresh Prince. Like the Fresh Prince was pretty consistent throughout the entire series. Um, I think all of the episodes are really really good. Uh, aside from like some of the ham fisted like uh, PSA kind of episodes, the re- reunion thing recently. What's that? There was a so there was a reunion thing recently that they did. The whole cast, and I guess some of them were talking. I guess Will wasn't talking to that to the mother that replaced oh. the original mother. So yeah, this was in the last year. They there was like a special they did, and they all. Met up at the house. Obviously, Uncle Phil's dead. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they all met up in the house. All the actors, they were all talking about the show and, you know, the highlights and stuff. It was pretty cool if you can find that online. That uh, yeah. Fresh Prince documentary. But, well, that, um, like, I, I, I have a weird, um, like, love-hate relationship with Will Smith. I love him, and I also think he is a total fraud. Yeah. He's like a YouTuber now, and it's really cringy. It's like, dude, you're already a bajillionaire. It's like, why do you gotta fucking stomp all over YouTube and try to, you know, do the like? We're we're uh, we're out here, you know, trying to just make a dollar. You're you're on here for what? To promote your your wife's horrible punk rock band. <laughs> and uh, you know, let's face it, getting jiggy with it hasn't aged well. <laughs> None of his rap. I don't think it was even well back in the day that stuff was fucking square man you had to be a square to listen to some will smith it was i was very listening soft. yeah very i was listening to like yeah. master p i remember having a fascination with like of rap and i was really into master p and uh like biggie smalls and stuff <laughs> what was the one the master p song and they're on the basketball court uh oh god I probably would have known this a few years back. I, I fuck. I don't know. Ash in chat. Uh, Ash, let us know what that song is on the on the basketball court. That that classic masterpiece song. But um, <laughs> yeah, Will Smith. Um, I mean, and when he did Aladdin, that was just like cringe. <laughs> like, why, why is he doing Aladdin? Wasn't it make him say? Yeah. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Wasn't he what Brady? Make him say um. Make, yeah, that was um. the song. Make, make him, him say, say um. Uh. Nah, oh nah, nah. yeah, that was the song I was thinking of. Okay, I remember. I remember that. <laughs> that was like that. Oh. The the height of like the bling bling era, right? And the grills. Yeah. Oh, the grill when the grills started becoming a thing. I everyone think cash had money fucking... was so big. Yep. Yep. It's like rap. Rap kind of sucks now, but it's starting to come back. I think uh, people are starting to wise up, and there's like, I don't know if you know who I think his name is uh, something McDonald, um, Tom Tom McDonald. Do you know who that is? No idea. He's like uh, he's a, kind of like an Eminem rapper. Um, he's getting really really popular because he actually raps about stuff. <laughs> huh. And you know we have like mumble rappers now. I think the mumble rap craze is is starting to go away. Thank it, fuck. It has to. I don't like that why, stuff. Why does it take so long? Why is it taking so long? I don't so know. Because but... kids are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, wasn't there like a like a um mug shot of Tim Allen like after he like got busted for doing coke and got arrested? 
<laughs> probably i know that like um yeah, it was like right before he got uh the home improvement job or something or maybe like he that was before he was a comedian um he's got a really weird history before he found jesus or whatever he said he did there's something like <laughs> some kind of story like that yeah in his mug shot and he had like a he had like a porn stash and he just gotten busted like for something with drugs uh, I think it was cocaine. That just makes me laugh. If it was the if it was the eighties, I guarantee you it was cocaine. Right. Thank God. I always say in like you know old uh, old good eighties movies, um, just classics. Like thank God for cocaine because cocaine co-wrote a lot of those movies. <laughs> what is it about John? Like I'm glad John Goodman. Like you know he's got healthy or whatever, but like he looks so weird. Then he does not look you seen john goodman lately yeah yeah he's uh he doesn't look like a big teddy bear anymore i'm sure he's like six foot seven or something i know he's really tall right um but it's like he doesn't plus he's old you know skin's sagging um he's yeah. just like he just looks like a not um he doesn't look like himself anymore <laughs> right yeah and chad they're saying he looked better fat yeah Definitely the ch- he's got the uh, you know the it was the thick dad bod of the nineties. Yeah, <laughs> there was something and... med- like medicinal about Roseanne. I think it was because it was like lower middle class struggle, like in, yeah, and yeah, the relatable family. Because like, yeah, you had a... like you had like Cosby Show, right? And it's like the rich family. Mm-hmm. Fresh Pince was was re- the rich family. You could you could relate because I kind of kind of because of Will Smith's character, but like. Roseanne was like that. You you recognize that in other families you knew, like a Roseanne it, family. It was a relatable show for the masses because you know a lot of people are. There's a lot more middle class and lower class people than there are rich people, so it's just an easier thing to grab a hold of. Oh, nice. Speaking of a Seattle native, I was telling you about Pac Man Case Andy, another another Seattle Seattle guy. Uh, we got in chat now. Um, so. This this you're hitting the value village here. Is that one of your is that one of your spots you hit a lot that you find stuff at? Oh, the stream must be. Uh, I guess it's it's lagged for me because uh, you're playing it on through your stream on your end. But uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So here we go. Uh, yeah, value village. I, I have like a whole um, like list of places that I go to. Sometimes I find stuff. Some sometimes I don't. Um, most of the is time, is there I a do. strategy to like? when you go do you go like when they first open do you go middle of the week i would assume that like if you go on the weekend it's picked over as shit or is it just you never know when something's gonna be there what's your tell us about a strategy you have on that uh generally this is the one i always start out with because it's um it, it one it's a really good store they always seem to have something uh and two it's like in a ritzy area so like the stuff that they do get is usually really good like this see there's alienware computer or like laptops um and uh yeah so uh (laughs) thrifty bitch um yeah i i I tend to go in the morning and then throughout the afternoon and uh, it's really weird because i actually worked at a value village in seattle on capitol hill when it was still a thing and uh, so we got to pick all that stuff. Like if you saw something you wanted, you could just take it. And you're like, pulling good later. titles out of there. You, there's definitely good titles in there. Yeah. What um, year you think this was? What's that? What year you think this was though? When you're looking at these games here? Uh, Would you guess? Oh. Two two okay. years ago? No, 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 no. This was recently. This was like okay. months ago. This was a few months ago. Well, that's good. I I only started doing these thrift videos like. Uh, maybe like four months ago so you're giving the people hope that there's still fines even even during the height of covid here or the 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 starting to be the downslope of covid yeah because, um, uh, it seems like everything just everything just doubled in price yeah they did and uh thrift stores like we said earlier are getting they're getting wise to the the rare games and stuff like that so all the rare stuff they they put in the case and they they fucking put a huge price tag sticker on it um but uh i don't know man it's just thrift stores Ugh, they're 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 really hit and miss lately i will be honest with you i never find anything cooler than like a like a fucking disney coffee mug when i go like i've <laughs> found i found maybe like 10 good video games in like three years of 
going here and there to to goodwills and I, I get a lot of comments saying that um they're like man you have so much good stuff in your in your thrift stores we never have anything you know people around the states and stuff and it's just like this is kind of how it's always been um most of my collection uh that's you know on my shelves um in the videos behind me are from thrifting it's like i i rarely buy stuff on ebay now i kind of have to because um you know covid and stuff like that it's just it's just more convenient to do that without having to go out but um yeah it's all from thrifting so another castle it's it's funny because you know i I hate to bring up metal jesus again but he just did a video on uh is this phoenix no, this is not Phoenix. This is Seattle. Is another castle a chain? It is in Washington. Right. Okay. There's three three stores. Because I remember he he went to the Phoenix in his recent one, and there was another castle there, I believe. Oh, maybe there are more than. So yeah, maybe maybe it's a chain. Yeah, my, they might have more. Um, I've never been to any other ones other than the ones in Washington. I've been coming to these ones for years. Um, and there's three stores that are in my area and only one of them, uh, ever has anything good. Um, most of the, like this store that I'm in right now, uh, usually has the same shit every single time. And it's just like, right. eh, no one's, no one's trading in games or whatever. Right. And it's just like, it, you go in there and it's just all like PS3 and 360 and like, you know, people live traded in everything to take all the switch games Mm -hmm. they've uh is that is that that's like what it what it's like in a lot of the game stores by me it's like people buy all the nintendo stuff out and you just have like generic copies of like 360 and ps3 that there was like a million copies of Mm -hmm. like a million old call of duties and uh you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah it's it's i mean it's pretty like these places are pretty good um, with like not having super generic, like you know, uh, bargain bin shovelware garbage, um, you know, and they sell like vinyl records of like video game soundtracks, and they they got a bunch of variety. Uh, so it's it's always fun to go in, even if they don't have you know games that I'm looking for. But every now and then you'll find a banger. Right. Do you have a system right now that you're gunning for that you're trying to add more titles to, or you just kind of, you just get, if I'm going to guess, you kind of get a little bit of everything, what you're looking for. Yeah. So like, um, I used to be pretty picky with what I buy, but I'm less conservative, uh, now that, you know, I have a a channel, uh, and I want to just like cover anything that I can. So like, if I ever want to, for whatever reason, um, review a game, uh, I'll, I'll have it. You know what I mean? If, and if it's something like mundane, like L.A. Noir or something like that. Well, yeah, that's I, the thing I said with your channel. I, like, we, we've we had, like, almost fi- – I know we've had probably near 50 channels and, and people on the show for interviews. And I got to say, like, you're – when I was going through all your videos, which I do for every guest, like, you have more variation than almost any channel I've ever covered because – Every channel we have, like, there's usually a niche, right? There's usually something that's, like, their thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do, you know, original Xbox reviews, mostly. Or I do mostly Switch stuff. Or I do mostly, like, there's not there's not as many channels that have as much variation as you do, you know? And I, and I really dig that. I think that there's something on your channel for everybody. Yeah, and it's, like, a lot of people tell me that that's actually a detriment to my channel as far as, like, quote-unquote algorithm so like they're like well you do this but then the next week you'll do something that's completely different it's like i don't give a shit about the algorithm i don't give a shit about uh you know pleasing the fucking smooth brain masses like i just want to make videos like what i on what do i want to make about normally those are niche stuff that not a lot of people might know about so like it's more of me doing that because i want other people to know about it here's the cool thing and, and um, i mean i'm just taking a guess at this i don't know how the algorithms work but say you had your you know your regular person just doing a doing a youtube search for something i mean you got so many different videos on stuff that they could land on you one of your videos 
for a lot of different topics that, that you could be pulling from, you know, when you're doing like these handheld reviews, or you're doing it because there's like the, the people that always want to watch thrifting videos or, you know, somebody's going to fall on your channel for a lot of different things, a lot of different you're pulling from a lot of different audiences. Yeah. And um, it's a good thing. I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I like to have, like I said, I have a lot of hobbies. Um, it's not just video games. I used to do like s things with like movie reviews and stuff, but again, it's like my channel's mainly toys and uh, video games, and I kind of keep it like that now. Um, now that I have a, uh, I don't know, just like a a better camera presence. Um, it's just changed a lot since I moved, and I I only have one roommate. Um, now I'm not surrounded by random roommates that will hear me uh talking and stuff so it's just like less awkward to film right so i can actually be a personality rather than just like a monotone like how i sound now <laughs> i'm very different on camera so, i think than than what i talk like in real life if you don't mind you know after after hearing about your you working at nintendo as a tester do you do you mind saying like what kind of work you do now or uh, right now I do, um, customer service, like online stuff, uh, for a company that does, uh, like different auto parts and, and whatnot. Um, gotcha. yeah, so it's, it's, I get to work from home and, um, that means I have more time to, That's uh, cool. do YouTube stuff, but I'm also getting paid on the side. So, yeah. You're not stuck in a cubicle. No, 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 no. Oh, That's how it was in Nintendo and it sucked. Yeah. It was, uh. Uh, so like, uh, you know, for a Nintendo, like what was, I would imagine it more like a, like a Google type of atmosphere, but was it not, was it kind of restricted corporate culture in there? Yeah. <laughs> bomber, bomber. It was, um, I, I hate, uh, I, I'm not going to name any names or whatever, but, uh, right. it was like a Nintendo, the best way to describe how working as a tester, um, was, is like, it's like high school you have all the different cliques of people that are friends. And I had so many people start rumors about me. Um, they're the, the coordinators, the people that would be like uh, the uh, lead on like a testing project um, would always favor, favor the, the sexy gamer girl who was working there, you know, over someone who uh, I, I'm not saying that she wouldn't, you know, do as much work, but, it was a very sexist environment, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, so if you were a pretty girl, you because it was a contract, it's a contract-based thing through a company called Aerotech. So the only way you can be a tester is if you go um, through this contract company and it's like you're on this many projects and then you have to take a month break so they don't have to pay you unemployment. <laughs> um, and then if they like what you did, uh, they'll call you back for another term and you could possibly move up from there, but not likely um, unless you're a pretty girl. And I know that sounds really cringy to say, but I was there, I saw it firsthand and that's how it right. was. Well, if you're, if you're a hot girl, you see they, they seem to do great on Twitch too. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, don't really, I don't really watch Twitch. I just, but I see that they, you know, if you if you look at like, if you ever go on like Twitch and you see that you like sort it by like the top streamers on there, you see that that's what it's like. It's like some kind of soft core, you know, thing that they mm -hmm. got going on there. That's why I prefer to stream stick with YouTube, you know. Yeah, definitely. So, um, and there's a lot of that on YouTube as well. Um, there are. I have a few female YouTubers that I legitimately like and, um, you know, they know their stuff and, yeah. uh, uh, but there a lot of them are the, I'm popular because I have big boobs and I like games yeah. and I hate that that's in a reality, but that's the truth. <laughs> and that's like, you know, what are we all 12 years old looking at like Jessica rabbit on who framed Roger rabbit? You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Haven't, haven't we grown up? Haven't we matured past that as adults that like no you like boobs and we're like whoa <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, everyone likes boobs and uh I don't blame them and that's just the reality and I wish sometime you know we all at some point if we're on you or you know whatever man it's like I wish I was a pretty girl this would be so much easier <laughs> right right I know <laughs> well we 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 pick guests by the content not the cleavage Good, good, good. 
<laughs> you could let one slip in there every now and then, but you know, you know, I, for, it for ratings. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Put it, put her on the thumbnail, and you know, you get this. She'll be the most viewed uh, video you'll ever have. <laughs> was this a Portland convention? What was what was this one? This was the Portland convention I was talking about earlier. Cool. That there's Wes from Game. Uh, okay, you're seeing it uh, f- further than I am. Uh, but yeah, um, I was with Wes and Rob from Gaming Off the Grid and uh, Chris from Telesplash Gaming. Um, and yeah, this convention, it's a very small, cozy convention, uh, free, huge arcade area. And I think uh, the bar scene is next. Yeah, Spirit of 77. Um, and yeah, this is where we're all... I was so drunk. <laughs> it was what great. Were drinking, what were you drinking that night? Uh, I think Wes... Uh, okay, so I pour, I brought the pitcher of Rainier. Um, and then Wes had like some weird coffee stout that uh, was just fucking delicious. Good That's time. Awesome. Yeah, there's Metal Jesus. <laughs> when you're uh what's the story about getting to the convention? Like do you have to so you paid for that, you got invited because you're a YouTuber? What was the story with that? Uh so this one, um, we just paid to go. Uh we I think at this point all of us were like maybe just under a thousand subscribers. Um so okay, yeah, here's Hair of the Dog Cast. Um go check them out, they're awesome. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we just, we went, we all met up cause Wes and Rob are from, uh, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. And then Chris is from Spokane, Washington. So he's, you know, Washington native like myself. Um, so yeah, they, they flew a plane to get there and then they met up with Chris and then I met up with them cause I live closer to Seattle and, uh, yeah, we just went from there and went to Portland. And I would, I would like, like to, you know, so I'm, a, I'm someone that hasn't been to conventions, but I've talked to a lot of people about their experiences there. And you know, would you say that, you know, there's no, is there's a lack of ego when, when everybody's, in, you know, in a, in a, in a scene like that, and you're just like all connecting, and you're all, you all realize that you're all just gamers, and yeah. or is there like an air of like superiority when some people are like in a, in a booth or. Is it just everybody's just kind of chill? I mean, what's what's your take on that? Um, everyone's really chill. Everyone, you know, you get to actually meet the person as opposed to knowing their online persona, what you see in the videos. And everyone's always really nice. And, you know, even if they're maybe not a nice person, they're going to be nice to you because you're at a convention. Right. Especially if they're a bigger YouTuber. I I'm sh- guarantee you Metal Jesus didn't give a fuck about talking with me. Uh, when we were at the bar, I guarantee you he has forgotten who I am completely. And, right. you know, that's just, you know, he's a big YouTuber. He, he's got better things to worry about than some schmuck like me. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, it's just all about, uh, I don't know, personal relations and being sociable. And, hey, um, yeah, I make this kind of content, you know, go check out my channel. And he completely did not check out my channel and just forgot. I guarantee you. Yeah. I don't blame him. That's how it is. And there's, there's probably, he's probably got like a lot of people coming up to him, maybe trying to get, I don't know, trying to get some shine or something. Or who, who knows? Yeah. Or it's like, it's like when you're, when you're like in a band or you connect to some label, everybody's like throwing the, the demo at you or whatever. Mm. Maybe, maybe he's just like, uh, maybe he's like, um, what's, what's the word? Like, uh, got a bad taste in his mouth about that or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's hard to say. I, you never know. You never know. It's just, you know, hopefully they're a nice person. You know, I've met a bunch of famous people. Pro, I've met Pro Jared. I was, I actually met him at that convention. Uh, I didn't get it on film, though. I got a picture with him, but um, he was he's also one of my favorite YouTubers. And I don't know if you heard, heard all the drama with him. Uh, like a I did years back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was all bu- it was all bullshit, uh, obviously, most of it, you know, but uh, yeah. he, he, he was nice to me. He was fucking the nicest dude when I met him. Um, and it was I was at the point where he was probably at his lowest um, after all that shit came out. So it probably made him feel really good. It was like to hear someone say, yo, I'm a huge fan. You've been a big influence on how I make content. So um, I don't know. <laughs> one thing's one thing's for sure is there's some weird sponsorships going around out there right now with the with the this the stuff that, um you know, people on the bigger channels are are schlocking around you know like the the manscaping shit and like the 
there, there's a lot of weird things that I mean, I, they must be paying good for 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 all the yeah. people that are repping those ads. Oh yeah, dude. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if it's still as big as it was, but for a while, you I, I don't I you've probably seen the ads for Raid Shadow Legends. Sounds familiar. But it's like a some shitty mobile app that you know right. everyone's saying that they like because they pay you know like five to ten grand depending on the YouTuber just to like have them be like, hey, I play Raid Shadow Legends. It's really fun. You should play it. It's like no, it's not. But they're paying you a shit ton to say it. I don't blame them. Um, I thought it was I, hilarious when James AVGN was was repping the Ray J AirPods. I oh, was, the Raycons. God. Yeah, yeah, that I, was a thing for like, a while too. Like, how can you not cringe when like James is like, get these Ray J AirPods? You're like, oh my god, dude, really? After really? years and years of literally not having any sort of. Sp- on, like as far as like him having to say about the product in his video like yeah i just skipped through that shit i understand like he's he's grown now um since he's got kids you know but like dude ray j headphones i just yeah. <laughs> would never be talking about like that's so not you that's not a good look on you james yeah and <laughs> at some point people if the money's good enough i mean I always joke around with the retro refresh guys and I'm just like, I'm waiting for the day that I can sell out, <laughs> you know, right. it's just like not actually, but yeah, no, I hear you. It'd be yeah. nice to get money for, for the passion. Yeah. And you know, I've had stuff getting sent to me from, uh, you know, companies and stuff, not, not crazy things. They don't pay me or anything, but they'll send me like a product every once in a while. And, um, you know, I won't like take a sponsor if it's something that's not related to my channel. So it's just like, I mean, if they pay me 10 grand to say, uh, hey, uh, use the or pimp out our, our ball shaver, our manscape ball shaver, yeah. you bet your ass I'm going to do it for 10 grand. Well, yeah, we, we have uh, we, we, we have a pack country at the end of our little our little trailer just for fun. You know, uh, through through a uh, cameo, we hit him up on there for that. Uh, but it's funny because like one, one of his recent ones for the podcast, he was like talking about like some kind of underwear, like me undies. Like, geez, geez. talking about like promoting underwear now. It's like, yep. really? yeah, yeah, no- me undies is what they're uh, called. And to what, what, what they might be, you know, who knows what's next. What's, <laughs> what's going to be the new uh, sponsor trend for a while. It was raid shadow legends. It's the manscape yeah. ball shaver, me undies, underwear, um, Ray, uh, Raycon earbuds and shit. It'll I don't be, know. Like deodorants, pimple cream. I mean, yeah. wait, wait, no, no, <laughs> it might go. Oh uh, yeah. And it's like, I, I, I don't mind when YouTubers do that. Just like put it at the end of the video. I don't want right. to waste like a minute of my life listening to you talk about that shit before the video. And there, there's just no way to segue it. It's like nope. now, so buy the underwear. So yeah. <laughs> the new Resident Evil. Yeah. It's like you, you can't segue. You can't segue from it. There's no subtle way to do it. And oh yeah, Audible was a big one for a while. Right. So never, yeah, it's never writing the checks. Yep. Give me the well, money, then, and I'll say whatever you want. Well, listen, Sean. Uh, in, in wrapping up now, is there is there been any advice you've gotten along the way? Because I know you have a lot of friends that are also fellow YouTubers. Has there been any advice along the way that really helped out that, you know, maybe you could pass along to some up and coming channels that could be listening to right right now uh, or in the future? Any good advice you've gotten from friends uh, about, you know, having a channel or just, you know, making content, making videos? Um, yeah, so, um, all of this I've learned through, you know, just doing it, um, osmosis, uh, what I've heard from other people, what I've seen from other people, as far as making videos, the content itself is important, but it's also half of what makes the, your video appealing to people. Right. And, you know, everyone's going to have a different niche. Everyone's going to have a different uh, amount of, uh, you know, subscribers and stuff like that. What it all comes down to is make content you like, make content that is relatable. 
um, be relatable. You know, people like to relate to the person they're watching. That's a big part of why I'm a fan of the people on YouTube that I am. Uh, but as far as filming goes, good lighting, good sound, um, good subject matter or interesting subject matter, and just be yourself. If you have a good personality, make sure that that shines and comes out through your videos. And that's really all I can say. Absolutely. Well, that's great advice. It's definitely very universal uh, for those listening. I mean, Sean here, this is this is an absolutely great channel. Uh, I wouldn't say that if I didn't really believe that. Like Thank I said, the, vari the variation in the content is excellent. Um, it's been easy talking to you through this interview. Definitely yeah. have a lot, a lot of stuff in common that we're interested in. Definitely. And uh, so the way it's going to work, we're going to upload this interview separately. It'll be in its own uh, video. Uh, in the next couple of days, I'll be sending you that. And thanks so much for doing the show, man. And, you know. Yeah, no problem. We'll continue to follow your content. Don't be a stranger. Stop by once in a while if you have some time. Definitely, and yeah. Uh, if you want me to come back, um, just tell me time and place and I'll be there. Absolutely. And uh, maybe stop by when your boy uh, Tell Splash Gaming is going to be here. For sure, uh, for sure, yes. That's next Saturday. So Tell, tell Chris on the episode that I, uh, that I talked good about him. <laughs> okay, I will. I'll I'll, se I'll send him uh when when it's uploaded. I'll send him a link. <laughs> All right, cool. I love that guy. I love Chris. Uh, yeah, he he'll 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 be a good um person to have on here. Definitely. Excellent. I'm excited, dude. And uh, yeah, really appreciate it again, man. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time for doing this. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Take care. You too.